Hello everyone. Welcome to the class. Uh, today we will discuss about the analog filter transformations because the strategy in the case of uh, design of Butterworth filters uh, adopted was that we will design a prototype low pass filter first and then we will apply transformations so that the a uh, prototype low pass filter can be converted into either a high pass filter a band pass filter or a band stop filter and uh, in the design of but uh, butterworth filter we saw that the butterworth filter is maximally flat in the pass band and the frequency response is monotonically decreasing throughout the pass band and the stop, stop band both to further uh, uh, to further know the details of uh, how to design a butterworth filter uh, i will uh, explain the case with another example and the example says that we have to design an analog butterworth filter the filter is monotonic in the pass band and stop bands that is no ripples are there uh, as we discussed Uh, the following are the specifications of the uh, butterworth filter low pass butterworth filter the uh, the frequency uh, the pass band ranges from 0 to 10 kilohertz transition band uh, is from 10 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz we will see in the diagram that how these uh, specifications can also be explained with the help of a diagram with the help of the frequency response and the stop band attenuation is minus 10 db uh, which starts at 20 kilohertz of course is given here so let's look at the uh, specifications now this is correspond the this point corresponds to 0 db right uh, and this point the dotted line this point on the y axis corresponds to because this is the 3 db bandwidth and the 3 db bandwidth given is 10 kilohertz the high, the uh, the maximum frequency component is given in the pass band is 10 kilohertz so that means it is the 3 db bandwidth so therefore at this point this point on the y axis will be minus 3 db and corresponding to this the frequency is 10 kilohertz and we are also given uh, the transition band we are ranges from 10 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz now from this point the transition band starts and it goes up to the frequency point which is 20 kilohertz and corresponding to this on the db scale the value given is minus 20 db uh, sorry minus 10 db attenuation the stop band attenuation is minus 10 db and which starts at 20 kilohertz so this uh, 10 kilohertz is my um, cut off frequency or the my uh, 3 db point 3 db frequency 20 kilohertz is my stop band frequency and the stop band attenuation given is minus 10 db this point as i have already explained corresponds to minus 3 db and this point corresponds to which is the start of the frequency plot this corresponds to 0 db or unity gain now we know that we can express so this is the formula uh, of the butterworth filter design uh, this is the general uh, anal angular uh, this is the general uh, capital omega is the general frequency right and divided by the cut off frequency because uh, this is a normalized uh, filter once the we also know that once the filter is normalized every frequency the whole frequency axis uh, will be divided by omega c right and this hj omega square is the frequency response in terms of power because the square is there okay so now hj omega square at omega is equal to omega s which is this frequency 20 kilohertz that means uh, 10 log 
because we are since, since we are taking the case with square so it has to be uh, directly the power we will take in dbs so 10 log 10 hg omega square will be minus 10 db at stop band frequency which is 20 kilohertz so 10 log hg omega square is equal to we can use this formula 1 over omega s which is our stop band frequency which is 20 kilohertz we have to convert it into uh, angular frequency by using the formula 2 pi f this omega c is the cutoff frequency which is uh, in our case it is 10 kilohertz so that's how the formula is applied uh, to design the butterworth filter uh, for these specifications let's see the case further now this is minus 10 uh, minus 10 why because uh, this part 10 log 10 hg omega square is minus 10 db as i have already explained so it is minus 10 so let's open up this log log of 1 uh, minus log of uh, this term so log of 1 is 0 we know that so minus 10 minus uh, is equal to minus 10 log 10 and this formula omega s by omega c capital omega now uh, we can can this 10 will cancel out this will be one a negative sign will also cancel out one is equal to log 10 and the and we further simplify the expression so one over one one over omega s by omega c to the power 2 n will be 10 from here if you solve it further we will be able to calculate n which is the order of the filter. Now, the value that we have obtained is 1.5849 and we have to take the next higher integer. So that means here for this example, the value of n, which is the order of the filter will be 2. Now we know that we can take the uh, polynomial, Butterworth polynomial corresponding to n equal to 2, which is even value. So we know that the uh, this is s square plus under root 2 s plus 1 is the Butterworth polynomial corresponding to n equal to 2 and uh, we can for we can formulate the transfer function uh, by uh, by by this formula 1 over the Butterworth polynomial which is s square plus under root 2 s plus 1. So this is the normalized transfer function because this one is here once this one is here that means it is normalized. To denormalize the uh, transfer function, we have to replace every s in the expression by s over omega c. So once you do that, this is your normalized, denormalized transfer function expression. This is how uh, we can uh, design a Butterworth filter. Uh, we can calculate the order of the uh, filter we can uh, get its transfer function right okay uh, this is this is the same transformation which is from uh, low pass to low pass but uh, this is for if the uh, frequency is a unity uh, unit frequency if the cutoff frequency is a unit frequency and if we want to transform it to some other frequency that we have already done in the previous example. So this transformation says that to transform an analog low pass filter uh, with unity cutoff frequency to an analog low pass filter filter with cutoff frequency omega c. We substitute s uh, to s by omega c that we have already done. Okay, we can take another example of the first order Butterworth filter uh, the transfer function in S domain is given as 1 over S plus 1. It is a normalized transfer function because uh, this one appears here as I have previously explained in detail. Now to transform this transfer function to new cutoff frequency which is omega c as an example let's say it is 5. We replace S in this transfer function equation we replace S with S by omega c. Now in this transfer function, if you look, we replace this s by s by s uh, to s by omega c 
and further doing the modifications we get the transfer function as omega c over s plus omega c and we put the value of omega c cutoff frequency as 5 and we finally get this transfer function now this is a denormalized transfer function because uh, at this point 5 is coming had it been 1, it, uh, it would have been normalized. We would have said it, it, it is a normalized transfer function. Uh, already explained a number of times previously also in the previous slides. Okay. Now, this is the, this is the transformation from a low-pass filter prototype to a high-pass filter. To transform an analog low-pass filter, HS, with unit cutoff frequency, which is, uh, we, will, we will take the normalized uh, low pass filter prototype to high pass filter HS with cutoff frequency omega C. Now we substitute S. We substitute omega C over S uh, at, in the place of S. Let's uh, take one example. The same example we will take of the first order Butterworth filter prototype. It's a low pass filter. Uh, HS is given as 1 over S plus 1. It is a normalized filter. Now we want to transform it to a high pass filter with cutoff frequency, let's say 2. Uh, since we want to transform it to a high pass filter, we will replace this S with omega C plus S. If we do that, what we will get is S over S plus 2. This is the transfer function for a high pass filter with cutoff frequency of 2. Now, if you notice here, high pass filter contains zeros as well as poles, whereas the low pass filter will only contain poles. All right. So this is how we can convert a low pass filter prototype to a high pass filter with, a, with any cutoff frequency we can design. Another example of a third order Butterworth filter Again, a normalized again the transfer function taken is a normalized transfer function because the denominator uh, is a Butterworth polynomial uh, with one and one at uh, the appropriate places. We need to determine the transfer function of the corresponding high pass filter with the, with cutoff frequency omega c equal to one. We want to design a high pass filter from this low pass filter prototype. Uh, normalized filter, normalized high pass filter we want to design. In that case, we have to replace S by omega C plus uh, omega C divided by S. Since we take omega C as 1, so therefore we need to replace S by 1 over S. Now, if you substitute 1 over S uh, in the place of S, so we get this uh, expression of the transfer function. Right, and we find uh, we uh, solve this expression and further do some mathematical manipulations. We will get the final normalized transfer function as s cube over s plus one into s square plus s plus one. This is again a normalized uh, high pass filter transfer function, and uh, you see it contains both zeros and poles. All right, now. Now we will deal with the conversion of the low pass filter to the uh, band pass filter. Now, by definition, a band pass filter rejects both low and high frequency components and passes a certain band of frequencies somewhere between them. So that means it will only the band pass filter will allow only certain band of frequencies outside that band. Uh, it will stop the frequencies or it will do uh, it will attenuate the signal outside the band thus the frequency response at g omega of a band pass filter has the following properties the response is zero at both omega zero and omega infinity that means outside the band and it is one for a frequency band which is centered at omega zero where omega zero is the mid frequency of the filter. Right? We know that there are two uh, minus three dB frequencies. One is omega L, the other is omega U. That means the lower cutoff frequency and the upper cutoff frequency. This is the center frequency or the mid frequency omega zero. And uh, the bandwidth of this filter will be uh, the difference of the upper cutoff frequency and the lower cutoff frequency. That means omega u minus omega l. K 
one is the uh, minus 3 dB uh, attenuation because uh, uh, this attenuation corresponds to the cutoff frequencies and K2 is the stop band attenuation uh, corresponding to stop band frequency. Corresponding to stop band frequency, yeah. Okay. So, and along the y axis remains the same 20 log Hg omega, which is the uh, NTV scale. Now, to convert unit T cutoff frequency low pass filter, low pass filter that means a normalized low pass filter prototype is given. The HS is given for a normalized low pass filter prototype, and we want to convert this low pass filter into a band pass filter with HS with cutoff with lower cutoff frequency as omega L and the upper cutoff frequency as omega U. Now the transformation for this type of filter design is we will replace S with S square plus omega L omega U divided by S into omega U minus omega L. We need to replace every S in the transfer function in HS by this transformation. If we want to convert uh, a low pass filter into a band stop filter, the specification, the two specifications of the minus 3 dB frequencies remain the same, which is the lower cutoff frequency and the upper cutoff frequency, because in this band, this band needs to be stopped. And the transformation to design a band stop filter from a low pass filter prototype is that we will replace S with S. If you look at the transformation of a band pass filter, whatever is there in the denominator will become the numerator in the band stop filter and the numerator in the band pass filter will become the denominator in the uh, band stop filter. That means S is to be replaced with omega U minus S into omega U minus omega L divided by S square plus omega L into omega U. So this is how we can uh, apply the analog transformations to convert a low pass filter prototype into either a uh, high pass filter or a band pass filter or a band stop filter. This is these are this is the band this is the frequency response drawn uh, of a band stop filter. You will see that omega L and omega U are the minus 3 dB frequencies, and whereas K2 is the stop band attenuation corresponding to K2 are two frequencies omega 1 and omega 2. These are the stop band frequencies of a band stop filter. Clear? Now this, this slide is actually the summary of the analog to analog transformations. What we have covered in the previous slide. It says that the, the first uh, figure is the Butterworth prototype response, uh, low pass filter, normalized low pass filter uh, prototype. Now if we want to convert it into a denormalized function, the transformation is we need to replace S with S by omega C and this is the transformation. Now this unity uh, cutoff frequency will be replaced with omega C cutoff frequency. For a, now this, this figure and S, the transformation S to omega C by S, this is a high pass transformation and we can replace the, we can design a high pass filter from the low pass filter prototype. This transformation is for the band pass filter, right? And this is the transformation as we have just discussed the uh, transformation. <coughs> this is the band, this is the design of the band stop filter using this transformation. And we can convert a low pass filter prototype to a star band stop filter. Now this slide actually summarily, summarily explains the, uh, the design of the low pass filter prototype to any type of filter, high pass, band pass, or band stop filter. Now there is one, another uh, important type of filter, which is all pass filter. Uh, here in this lecture, I will discuss only the analog uh, part of this, analog design of this all pass filter. I will cover in detail once I will start with the digital filter design and I will take up the digital counterpart of this analog design here that we will discuss just now. In short, we will discuss here 
but in detail the digital trans uh, using the digital transformations how an all pass digital filter can be designed uh, and what is the frequency response what is the magnitude and phase response in digital domain we will discuss when uh, we will discuss when i will uh, come to the uh, digital transformations lecture now what is an all pass filter analog all pass filter there is another type of filter that leaves the amplitude of the signal intact but introduces only phase shift the so this type of filter is called an all pass filter the purpose of this filter is to add phase shift to the response of the circuit the amplitude of an all pass filter is unity for all frequencies that's what is explained in this equation where hj omega is equal to 1 for all omega for all the frequencies the uh, magnet the amplitude the magnitude response will remain same right the phase response however changes from 0 to 360 degree as the frequency is swept from 0 to infinity this has to be the magnitude response we uh, there has to be a modulus so the modulus of hj omega is 1 right but the phase response can go from 0 to 360 as the frequency is swept from 0 to infinity the purpose of an all pass filter is to provide phase equalization typically in pulse circuits this is the analog application of the analog all pass all pass filter right we can have the same kind of applications in the digital domain also where we can use it as an equalization circuit it also has application in single sideband suppressed carrier ssb sc modulation circuit so the magnitude of the all pass magnitude response of the all pass filter is 1 for all omega there has to be a uh, modulus right modulus of hj omega is 1 actually it is missing here modulus but the modulus of hj omega has to be 1 this represents the frequency response once you take the magnitude that becomes the magnitude response because the frequency response involves the phase response also please uh, uh, remember this point now the transfer function of an all pass filter is defined like this s square minus this has a special characteristic i will discuss in the next slide what is the special characteristic about the poles and zeros about the position of poles and zeros that makes it an all pass filter it is as in the numerator side is it is s square minus omega not by q uh, i am introducing one more factor which is the quality factor of a filter Uh, i will discuss i will define this factor and uh, the transfer function is in terms of the mid frequency which is omega naught or the center frequency right now in this expression q is known as the quality factor of the filter this is a measure of the sharpness of the filter response that how sharp the peak we get in case let's say in case of a band pass filter now the q of Uh, because an all pass filter is a, is uh, having a magnitude response in the uh, in a, in a certain band so we define it we are defining it for a band pass filter all right and uh, the the q the value of the q will determine the sharpness of the uh, band that how sharp the filter becomes the q of a band pass filter is the ratio of the center frequency and the difference of minus 3 db frequency that means q is defined as omega not divided by omega l minus omega u now this is the uh, transfer function of the all pass filter in uh, s domain uh, when i will come to the digital part i will convert it into hz and then we will see uh, the behavior of the all pass filter in that to add more to the uh, theory of poles and Uh, poles and zeros in uh, butterworth filter design uh, we can use the enhancement and suppression properties of poles and zeros to design filters now what is the enhancement property that when you introduce a pole uh, or a zero uh, there will be when you introduce a pole there will be a, a negative slope you can achieve of minus 6 db per octave and when you introduce a zero you can achieve a uh plus 6 db per octave uh 
positive slope of the frequency response. So you can go on adding uh, poles and zeros and you can control the, the roll off of the frequency response. Now low pass filter has a maximum gain at omega equal to zero that we know that omega equal to zero it is uh, the uh, maximum gain and the gain decreases with uh, frequency. Now the simplest low pass filter has a single pole on real axis say at minus uh, omega c so that's the cutoff frequency so it has a single uh, now this curve corresponds to I have already explained this curve but uh, just to add little more details of the poles and zeros in the design of filters so when uh, when a single pole on real axis is there this is the line that will give you the frequency response right then if you add more poles that means the poles will lie on because the uh, in the butterworth filters the poles take the locus of the circle the position of the locus of the circle if you add more poles uh, then you can have uh, uh, actually poles on the real axis will give you a uh, and on the left side will give you a dampener will give you a decay effect uh, exponential decay effect whereas the poles on the uh, on the uh, on the on the on the semicircle will give you a uh, decaying complex sinusoidal effect right so uh, so that means the uh, when you so when this uh, straight line curve is there corresponding to single pole now if you keep on in increasing the poles with the poles will be uh, with the same angular spacing right complex poles will be with the same angular spacing and when you go on increasing you will be getting a uh, sinusoidal decay so that means the filter will have a sharper roll off and will go more towards the brick wall filter to have a complete brick wall type of low pass filter that is very sharp cutoff. We need a wall of poles as shown in the figure. The more poles we get, the sharper the cutoff. So that's what is explained here. So that's how you can introduce the concept of poles and zeros and explain the behavior of the filter. Now, just to add further into the uh, comparison of the low pass, band pass, notch, high pass, and all pass filter, that can be this, these are the magnitude responses of the various types of filter and these are the pole locations you can um, you can I mean uh, roughly uh, uh, roughly assess uh, how the pole locations can be there for these types of filters for a low pass filters the poles will be on the semicircle uh, locus right uh, and no zeros will be there in the case of a band pass filter, the poles will be complex conjugate pair of poles and the zeros will be at the uh, origin. In the case of notch filter, the poles will be on the imaginary axis. The uh, positive and negative, the same value uh, poles will be there with a negative sign, but on the imaginary axis. And the two poles will be the complex conjugate pair of poles. Now high pass filter, the poles will be there on the uh, semicircle, but equivalent number of zeros will be there on the uh, on the origin. And in the case of all pass filters, uh, that's that's the point which I was trying to explain in the previous slides that you will have two poles which are complex conjugate pair of poles and two zeros which are again the complex conjugate pair of zeros. So that makes the, the result of a filter to be an all pass filter. Okay, in the next lecture, uh, we will discuss about the design of uh, IAR filters uh, using the impulse invariant technique and then further uh, we will go with bilinear transformation and then ultimately we will come to the digital transformation. Thank you.